together today, and, and the mayor certainly for your uh, critical endorsement as we go into uh, the 2012 election. Uh, Auditor General, it's, it's no big secret here anywhere. Republicans control the whole operation of state government. I think it's critical that we keep the good work of Jack Wagner going by having an independent watchdog. And I know uh, Jack sometimes got a little bit of flack because you know he was auditing a Democratic administration. I said, but you know the Auditor General, there's a reason why we elected separately. And that's because you're not paid to be everyone's buddy. You're paid to be the independent watchdog. I said, you know, there's three top priorities I've got. Number one is I think we have to have an audit of all the water protection programs in the state to make sure that with this Marcella shale drilling that our drinking water is protected. That's number one. Number two, we need to have an infrastructure audit. I don't, it's no big secret in the Lehigh Valley that we need to find a way to get more money into our roads and bridges. That is absolutely critical to put people back to work and to improve safety. And I think it would be good for business as well, not only our local chambers that I'm talking about. Like, my first priority would be you got to have, we have to do an audit of all the water protection programs, all this Marcella Shale going, mm -hmm. to make sure our water is protected. And we got to do an infrastructure audit. we got to see which roads and bridges, uh, information is available, Penda. We have to know specifically what roads and bridges are underinvested in and which ones are dangerous because, I mean, we don't want to have what happened in Minnesota, um, St. Paul, Minneapolis, happened here with that bridge collapse and people dying. And you will, and you will get this from PennDOT people. That is a very real threat if we don't start finding ways to put more investment in roads and bridges. Number three, we have to do an audit of all our job creation programs at the Department of Community and Economic Development. Um, I'm sure you would like more tools as a mayor to help recruit people right, right. in Pennsylvania. I mean, that's, that's right. We need to we need to find out because there there are programs that are there and are and have worked in the past. We need to be investing in those and find out which ones aren't don't work and just get rid of them. We'll make them better. Those are the top three priorities. But you know, they, I, you know so far I'm at least the only one running. I mean, you never know what's going to happen um, between now and uh, the filing deadline. Um, but appreciate the honor, and I, the Lehigh Valley, along with the south central part of the state, um, you know, considered you know, a little bit more of the swing areas of the state. Some of the areas tend to be more, but it's just about turnout. Um, but I know it's a critical area of the state. We've got some real uh, pockets of uh, Democratic votes, but I know a lot of it is swing voters, too, and I think it's going to be a critical part for not just the primary, but the general election. I forgot to tell the mayor about this. We also promised to get you a thousand petition signatures. Oh, yes, yes. So they're going to promise a thousand uh, yeah, I promise you a thousand. That's right. That's right. Not all your name, though. You won't be your name signed a thousand times. So, uh, so honored to have your support and so many of the other elected officials. And Mike, thanks for putting us together. And uh, that. Any, any questions? I mean, while we're on mic. Yeah, you know, while we're on mic. We should get a uh, let everybody make a statement. Sure. Support sure. for you, so that John can get that. Sure. Start with the mayor. Yeah. No, I mean, Eugene, I'm I'm, I'm proud to support you. I think you make a great honor. Everything you said is really critical uh, that we can continue to keep uh, this branch of government uh, uh, in democratic hands. Uh, I think it's it's a uh, it's a it's a critical office that, uh, especially within with, with the current control of both the House and Senate right. and the governor's office, we need an independent voice there that uh, uh, is is really uh, uh, putting out the truth and, and, and calling. Uh, State government uh, task that they need to call task. So uh, I appreciate your willingness to run, and we'll support you any way we can. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. And I just to follow up on that point, people may forget, but they said, what impact can an auditor general have other than just pick? Because some people say, well, we get the fiscal watchdog, but how can you impact programs? I don't know if people remember this. I'm sure the mayor does, but in the mid '90s, uh, then Auditor General now U.S. Senator Casey did an audit of nursing homes across Pennsylvania. And that was not a fiscal, that was called a performance audit. So you get to do fiscal audits and you also do performance audits and found seniors being not appropriately taken care of all over the state. And because of that work, it, cha it really changed dramatically how nursing homes are in Pennsylvania. And, I, and so that's just one example for people to go, how can you do that? That's how you do it. I can tell you the one thing that I would like you to do when you get there is uh, really look at the regulations uh, and, and do an audit of the regulations regarding pipeline safety. Uh, this is a huge issue. I saw probably the four-part series I saw heard in the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer. It's a huge issue for us. We had a main disaster here. We had lots of molten agent cast iron pipe, and there's very few regulations about the safety. Uh, and similar to safety within the nursing home, safety within our public utility systems, I think, is critical, and it's something that we have not focused on the state of Pennsylvania no. in, in any significant way. 
absolutely, and um, I think that is correct. And one of the things that, that's a good segue into, I, you know, people that know me as a state legislator know I was the first legislator to put my expenses online, and I'm very open with Facebook and Twitter, and, and I also, I'm going to try to have outlets like that for people to, not just yourself, Mary, you can always get me on the phone, but for people to have a, to get information to the office so that we can make sure they're like, oh, we never, we didn't think about doing that one. And so we're, we're able to be responsive in that and to try to make some new barriers, take advantage of all the social networking tools that are out there. So not only are we disseminating information quickly and rapidly, but we're able to have a good flow from all the citizens of the state as well. And I'm very proud of uh, the support you and uh, you're running for all of the general of our state. Uh, I think it's very important that Lily Avala as a whole has someone that we can connect to. Uh, as I read your background, as I was very impressed. Uh, we need somebody that we know that is going to go fight for the people. Uh, one of my concerns, though, is that um, when we look at the way we see our seniors today, a lot of our seniors are really struggling in this economy right now. And, uh, I hear over and over again as far as uh, seniors moving away from tax and things like that. So that's one of the biggest things that uh, concerns because I, I deal with seniors on a daily basis. I'm executive director for seniors. And uh, I watch and I make decisions on a daily basis whether I'm going to pay for this or I'm going to pay for that or I'm going to eat. So uh, it's very important for me to see that uh, they get away from seniors taxes that they're paying for at school tax. It's a great uh, point. First of all, I mean, the Corbett budget, Governor Corbett's budget, led to increases in yes. school taxes because it took the state investment that it was going in, and under uh, Governor Rendell's leadership, and look, ne the, you never have a perfect system, but increasing the state investment meant reducing pressure on the school taxes. When that state investment came out, we knew, and it, it happened in New York. It happened. In New York, we had gone four and a half years without a school tax increase. Um, well, four, four budget cycles. When this happened, again, back in the jam. I mean, so that I hear they really just, they did that and cut all the teachers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And cut about a third of the teacher teachers. We lost 100 teachers in our own town. We 70 in each teachers, like 120 or something. Something like that, yeah. Well, that, that's just teachers, that's not even professional. So that, and again, so. York faced a probably similar percentage, because I think the Allentown yeah. School District is, in Reading are like first and second in state funding formula. York is third, or, you know, it's third. So right we're, there, we're all yeah. near the top. Um, but that's that's number one. Number two, the Auditor General does do audits of all the all the school districts, mm -hmm. and that is where you know I, I have this joke. Um, it's not a joke, but I, but it's true because you gotta laugh and cry. That I told my wife we could run a great commercial for Auditor General. And she said, "What's that?" I said, "We could get all my college girlfriends to do an ad to tell me how cheap I was." And she was like, "You know, look, let's just stick to <laughs> you've got very low expenses as a legislator. You know, open record." So he read that from the bullet point. <laughs> That's right, yeah. That's right. So she did not, she won't sign off on us putting that ad out there. But the point is. Do I need to edit that out? No, it's just. <laughs> uh, I actually think it'd be funny if one of his exes watched one. Yeah, that cheap no, son of. No, what, what, bro, I did it in uh, graduate school. She's just to say, because well, I would go to Taco Bell, it's free refills, right? right. So I was saying, well, why do people order the medium or the large? Like, it's free, <laughs> it's free, free refill. Get the small, and, you know. Um, it's the so. kind of fiscal thinking we need. <laughs> yeah, that, so yeah, you take that so take it for what it's worth. Um, but the you serious ready Taco Bell. That's not, the not, I question that. Uh, <laughs> well, not not anymore. No, not since I started P ninety eight. Almost so. me. That's right. Yes, almost me. Um, but the serious part of this is that we do need to do aggressive audits there because school districts should be spending money on stuff that improves student performance. Absolutely. Student performance, and if it's not improving student performance, then we need to call them out on. And that's not to say that every school district is doing a bad job. I mean, we just, but, the, but that all impacts the school tax budget as well. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Well, I'm very happy to say that I would endorse you in, in this election for Auditor General. Uh, and I think when it comes to audits, people tend to think just of uh, the fiscal right. and the dollar signs. Uh, they don't realize how important the audits are because you have to look at anything and audit anything that could possibly put the state communities or citizens at risk. Um, and that can be, as you said, you know, infrastructure right down to your, our computer systems, which in this day and age, with the way things are happening um, in technology, could put a lot of systems and a lot of uh, citizens at risk. Well, well it's, it's actually, I mean, yes, and that is another thing that falls under the purview, making sure, and I'm not, when I say this, 
sometimes I want to make sure that I'm being careful about saying this is I have no information that people in Pentagon are not being scrupulous about how they make sure people's private information doesn't get out. But that is, again, a performance audit to make sure that that is happening because people's lives can be destroyed if their personal information that governmental agencies have access to simply because of driver's license, et cetera, if that gets disseminated to the public. There's no question about it. And that falls under the purview of the Auditor General. And that is significantly more of a threat today than at any time in our history, not because anything's doing anything right, it's just society's moving forward, and there's a lot of good that comes with that, but there's a lot of challenges that come with that as well. And I think that's important because anything, audits can show risk and where a state, a city, citizens are at risk. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm not as cerebral as my endorsement. <laughs> my endorsement is because of the fact that you've been everywhere and built a political organization that's capable of winning this seat. So if anybody else on the Democratic side would want to get involved now, they would be in a position where they haven't done the work and the legwork that you've done to build an organization to win. And that's why I'm supporting well, thanks And for all me. the other reasons, too. But I just that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that's a blatant lie. I've had him on business matters. <laughs> yeah, I, um, <laughs> I do. As uh, This is an organizational race, meaning that, you know, this is not a race. It's not U.S. Senate governor where you're going to be spending $20 million on television. I think it's really important together networks across the state. I've been working at for the last time. So I appreciate you don't have a twelve million dollar field budget? Yeah, no, it's 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 just not it's three just, guys with a yard sign. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my and my mom comes at really affordable rates in the Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, but I've been more and I, I do appreciate that because I do get that feedback a lot that some people say, look, you've, you've you've done all the work. Every time I turn around you're at a different dinner or function. Representative, uh, when, when the mayor and Mike Colvin asked me to come out today, I said I was more than happy to for a couple of reasons. Having followed you a little bit, I know your commitment to open government, transparency, and honesty is admirable and something that that position sorely needs. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned the social networking bit of, uh, of Sorry, a little bit office. Right. Having nice spoken time. with you on Facebook and Twitter. You just keep that ball. Good to see you. Yeah. 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 Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> having, having spoken with you on Facebook and on Twitter before, I appreciate the again the the openness, and that's uh, something that this position, maybe more than others, needs. I will say, like I mean, what the mayor said about pipeline safety obviously needs to happen, particularly in the state, and in the valley. How many, how many miles of cast iron pipe do we have? I remember you, you know this uh, in the valley, mm -hmm. uh, over two hundred, right? Pipe and frequently it's over hundred years old, and all. I'll add to that my concern that, and I don't know what what responsibility you have, but just the, the decaying state of the infrastructure in the valley and in our urban forests is just so concerning. If we are going to be able to compete with suburbs in the surrounding area as well as other states, we need to be able to have the basics of development so that we're. we're ready. Part of this.